We all want to get the most out of our singing voice and we all want to avoid voice injury at any cost. Singing technique certainly plays its part in helping the singer to avoid vocal damage, but there are several other exercise physiology principles that every singer needs to observe to sustain vocal health. What are these so-called exercise physiology principles? Let's find out. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day, welcome back to Voice Essentials where everybody sings. My name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. So it probably comes as no surprise that I am particularly interested in helping singers to avoid vocal injury where possible. I'm a great believer in prevention is better than cure, so today I want to equip you with some practical know-how that will hopefully help you to care for your voice, which in turn should have you singing better and for longer. I'm going to be allowing a great little article by Mary J. Sandage and Matthew Hock to guide our video today. Titled Exercise Physiology, Perspective for Vocal Training, Sandage and Hock's article discusses the role of the vocal warm-up and cool-down, topics that we've covered in previous videos. So as always, I'll leave links to those videos in the description section below for those of you who haven't seen them before. The emphasis of this article is outlined by Sandage and Hock when they write, to be clear, if we are to apply exercise physiology principles to voice function, the focus is on the muscular aspects of the laryngeal function. They define the scope of the article further by stating that aspects of vocal fold cover fatigue or wear and tear are not within the scope of the application of exercise physiology evidence to voice function. Essentially, the article and what we will cover in this video targets the management of muscular fatigue as well as those strategies that enable the singer to recover from acute injury quickly. Under the heading Principles and Adaptations with Training, Sandage and Hock state that the body wants to work efficiently and to that end, muscles adapt in times of physical challenge, upregulating various mechanisms to help the muscles work more efficiently. The opposite is also true. You may have noticed how after an extended period of vocal rest, I'm talking weeks and months here, not days, your voice will lose what I often refer to as match fitness. A reduction of acoustic tone, laryngeal agility, as well as a general lack of vocal stamina all seems to come as a result of prolonged vocal rest. Sandage and Hock note that there are three principles that administrate the tissue plasticity of the vocal folds the said principle, overload principle, and the reversibility principle. Sound check. The said principle is an acronym for specific adaptations to impose demand. If you've been following the Voice Essentials channel videos for a while now, you'll have heard me use the term task specific many times in relationship to voice training. Well, task specific and the said principle are essentially the same thing. For example, if you're a contemporary singer whose vocal demands include rock and pop, then learning classically orientated technique will most likely not equip the voice with the task specific skills demanded by your chosen contemporary genres. The specific adaptations do not meet the imposed demand. The second consideration for the adaptation of training is the overload principle. Sandage and Hock write that if a muscle is to develop beyond its current level of functioning, it must be challenged at a level beyond which it is used to working, hence the overload principle. Again, we discussed this in previous videos when I've encouraged you to always take your singing exercises to the extreme of your range plus one or two semitones, requiring more of the voice and encouraging it to go beyond its limit of comfort employs the overload principle. Interestingly, Sandage and Hock note that for the first four to eight weeks of muscle strength training, neural adaptations will be the predominant mechanism for strength gains before muscle hypertrophy, muscle volume increases are obvious. This reinforces the need for regular, consistent practice over time. If you're searching for singing exercises that employ the said principle and also offer the opportunity to involve the overload principle, then you might like to download Dr. Dan's Voice Essentials. The exercises are task specific and they work the contemporary voice over an extended range. 
It won't surprise you to learn that my exercise CD also activates the third principle, the reversibility principle. Sandage and Hock summarise the reversibility principle nicely, stating that once trained up for a given singing role or a vocally demanding occupation, it is easier to stay in shape than get in shape. It's a simple case of use it or lose it. Many of my subscribers are watching this video for the first time at the start of the Northern Hemisphere summer, a time of holidays and rest. It can also be a time of singing silence for many vocalists while they become distracted by outdoor activities. Neglecting the exercise of the voice for extended periods of time can lead to a reversal of all your hard work during autumn, winter and spring. Sandage and Hock are even more explicit, writing, it could be hypothesized that voice rest lasting more than four weeks or a total vocal load reduction of more than 70% of maximum load for more than about four weeks will result in a down-regulation of muscle mechanisms that were previously up-regulated. Again, use it or lose it. Not that you can't regain it again, but you can avoid a whole lot of hard work and frustration by simply maintaining what you've already achieved with regular vocal activity. And there you have it, three exercise physiology principles that will help you to maintain better vocal health. Said, overload and reversibility. Or in layman's terms, make sure your singing exercises are task specific, requiring the voice to safely step beyond its comfort zones on a regular and consistent basis. You might like to explore these three principles in more depth, so I've put together a playlist of videos that will provide you with practical skills for better exercise phys physiology. You can click on this link here or the link in the description section below. I hope, you to, I hope to see you again soon in a moment. I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.